So yeah, I know he's gonna have a, another biopsy again today. He's gonna cry. It's not gonna be fun times. Every day, every appointment. You're gonna take a good nap today, aren't you? Is a race towards hope. Michael, look. And a race against time. Michael, Michael keeps me going every day. Every day, Michael keeps me going. That's so sensitive. I know he's gonna lose it. Terry and Georgia Pirovolakis are desperate to find a cure that doesn't exist. Their 18-month-old son, Michael, is the only child in Canada diagnosed with SPG50, a genetic disorder that will ravage his brain and his limbs unless they find a way to stop it. Every day we're trying to figure out the next steps, where we go, what do we do, what is needed. Yeah. We have to just hurry up and make sure that everything's moving along. I know, I'm sorry, my bud. Today could mean a reprieve. Doctors at Toronto's Sick Kids Hospital are taking a skin biopsy to send to Boston. A team there will test hundreds of drugs on it to see if any might slow the disease. It could buy them precious time. Time to keep looking. All of this is about getting Michael better. We want it now. He needs it now. He needs it now. It happened so quickly, from the worries that Michael wasn't talking or walking yet, to that day in April when genetic testing revealed why. When they realized they had to create their own hope after none was offered. Look at those people down there. This little guy just looks so perfect. You know, he smiles and he laughs and he was making all these gains and then they said to us, you know, he will never reach the level that you want him to reach. Like, he will probably never speak. He will probably never develop normally, mentally. He will probably be in a wheelchair. Once they told us, it was like a fog was over our eyes. It was like you were wearing sunglasses with the tint on them, like you couldn't even see out of. And that lasted for like two days. You know, we came home and just curled into balls and just just cried. And you said you were in a fog. What was going through your mind? I said, there's no way we're going to accept this. There was no, no sit back and sit watch back. him degrade. There was just go forward and, and give him the best chance at life that we could. Fear fueled them. Terry went online and wouldn't stop. What he found at first was devastating. Only 22 other families in the U.S. with the same disease and most of those children already in wheelchairs. I remember seeing it somewhere. They were frantic, refusing to give up. Terry read everything he could and called anyone who might help. I read 20, 30, 40,000 articles, uh, hundreds of doctors, maybe five, 600 doctors, pharmaceutical companies, uh, meetings, I would say probably in the hundreds. Emails. Emails, thousands of emails. Emailing. Right, because I, I didn't want to leave anything unturned. So what were you asking them? I asked them if there was their child, what would they do? Uh, I asked everybody the same question, and they all said gene therapy. Nice poo poo, nice. nice. It's a glimmer of light, and they grasped it, even if it's an untested promise. There you go. In theory, gene therapy could work, but a treatment for kids like Michael doesn't exist because his disorder is so rare. There you go. They had to look for someone willing to create one. Yeah. <laughs> With the dreaded clock ticking, just weeks after Michael's diagnosis, they found hope in Texas with a Canadian researcher committed to finding a cure. What motivated you to come here? I, I, I got tired of just diagnosing and not being able to do anything about it. Dr. Berge Manassian is a pediatric neurologist at University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. And be able to give hope. And, he left uh, Toronto's Sick Kids Hospital, determined to offer parents more than despair. It's the hardest thing when someone brings you their healthy child. Usually they've had few symptoms. Uh, and because of the genetics uh, testing, we're able to diagnose them. And so we have a movie in our head of what's going to happen to that child. And as you can imagine, that's quite difficult. 
to tell them how their child is going to suffer, how they're going to potentially die. So Manassian came here to lead a team that creates custom gene therapies for children with rare genetic disorders, for children like Michael. So Michael currently has a very bad condition. He has difficulties uh, with his arms and legs uh, moving, and he has a very bad epilepsy. He has developmental problems. His cognition is affected. So of the 25, 26,000 uh, genes that we all have, in his case, one of them is missing. Uh, so he's otherwise a perfect boy, except he has that one gene that's missing. OK, so this is the facility where we would, we would make the drug to treat kids with SPG50, like Michael. The lab here is so new, so it's still under construction. Cold. And there are only so a handful like it in the world. It's here where Dr. Stephen Gray could produce a human-grade virus that would act like a delivery truck to carry that missing gene to Michael's brain. Every experiment here is an experiment in hope. All of them start with a single patient, a single family that wants to make a difference. It's a, it's a huge responsibility uh, that people are essentially trusting us with the chance to save a child's life. Um, and so we try to honor that commitment every day that we're here and every breath that we take. The stakes are so high, and yet there are no guarantees. This is a world first. So replacing that one gene in whatever percentage of his brain cells, we hope maybe he'll be able to walk, have less seizures, uh, and not uh, degenerate as he is uh, doing. The real answer is we do not know. He will be one of the first, if not the first, persons who have ever had this disease to have the gene replaced. So we shall see. Ready? One, two, three. Keep going. Four. Nice. Five. Six, keep going, Michael, seven. For Michael, Eight. gene therapy could halt or even reverse the degeneration that has already set in. Keep going, oh, one more step. Oh. But at a staggering cost. Terry okay. and Georgia have to fund the research that could save their son's life. Ready? Let's do some pushing. Let's How much money do you guys have to come up with? Our piece that we have to raise is three million in a year. In a year? In a year. So the year is because we want them to come up with the gene therapy as soon as possible for Michael. The earlier, the better. So if the progression stops when he's two, then that would be amazing. They've already cashed in all their savings and remortgaged their home. Mindful, they still need to take care of their two other children. And, uh, you know, you think that after liquidating everything, you'd be unhappy. I think that was probably one of the happiest days of my life, knowing that we made one step further for Michael's treatment. And if that meant losing everything but gaining his mobility or gaining his mental capacity, it was fine. It was fine with us. When I saw this post come up on Facebook, I knew I had to get involved. In the community has rallied around them. So that's where the $3 million comes into play. The family has a GoFundMe page so to raise the rest of the money. And neighbors are helping too. You guys, and we're grateful that you guys are willing to support us, right? To help us along this crazy journey. Local business owners are organizing a fundraiser. We have a bouncy castle. We are going to get people who are going to do baking, so we're going to have a bake sale. Some neighbors have even come knocking, offering whatever they can, even a jar full of coins. As we leave here, you guys can start talking about it, Instagramming, posting it, asking for donations. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Thanks, bud. The guy no problem. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We'll get a lot of Thanks, man. I think the biggest thing is the emotional roller coaster, right? You go home and you're driving and you're like sad. And then you come home and someone knocks on the door and you're happy again, right? And it's just. It's, back it's a forward. lot of emotions. It is a lot of emotions, you know? So Michael's just eating his timbits. <laughs> Michael, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, so I want to first off thank you, uh, everyone, for caring about my son, running together to, to help him. It really means a lot. It all comes back to time. Terry checks in regularly with the medical team in Dallas. The first stage of the clinical trial has started, financed by their life savings. Uh, just getting the mice up and going and, and everything that we're going to go through. I mean, we're still, we're, we're still a ways out. 
But even if they raise the rest of the money, it still will be at least 18 months before Michael gets treatment, and the disease won't wait. All right. Okay, guys, I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, guys, take, take it care, easy. Everyone. Take care. We wish that the government would help us. We wish that there was some mechanism for funding for not just us, but other people with these rare diseases. That This is going to be a common thing. Someone's going to go to the hospital. They're going to get a genetic report. It's going to say that they have this rare disease. They're going to go online. They're going to see our story. They're going to call me up. I'm going to help them out. And then they're going to go and try to raise $3 million. And this can't keep happening over and over and over, right? So it's extremely urgent. Uh, if we don't get the funds, Michael will start losing more of his legs. He will become paralyzed. It will reach up to his arms and, and further on. So it's really a race against time. Oh, I got you. And every day that passes, the odds become more terrifying. <laughs> time is an enemy that is slipping away and threatening to take their child with it. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto. Now, Michael's disease may be rare and gene therapy is very expensive, but Dr. Manastian says this research could one day help children with other genetic disorders and maybe even adults with more complex brain diseases. We need to learn now with these children with these horrible fatal diseases, try to help them and learn for that, from that what we're going to do for the more common diseases. So imagine a time when someone has Alzheimer's disease, we can kind of predict that. And we know that, let's say, this 12 genes are responsible. And if we break that set of 12 and fix three of them, they won't have Alzheimer's anymore. Dr. Manastian says gene therapy may also have a big impact on research into brain tumors, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and schizophrenia.